So we just had a rather um, articulated discussion um, in response to some wonderful questions. And thanks again to the group uh, for that. Um, I I did think with such, you know, conceptual material um, having been covered, we would do well to, to, to try to spend a bit of time here with um, with some uh, concrete uh, tasks with the models. And uh, to that end, we have uh, the model built uh, yesterday, version 10, which I'll remind people um, is available on the uh, in the participant resources area. Um, and uh, I'm planning now to uh, leave that uh, model for most of the day, but um, and, and and start another one. But here, um, we're going to do one final sort of set of modifications to incorporate uh, some interventions with this model. Um, and I'll use that as a jumping off point um, for work in a quite different direction involving uh, uh, networks and contagion within models, okay? So uh, we have version 11 here. Um, that's the one that's posted. Uh, and I will forthwith, so I'll share my screen um, and I will forthwith um, call this, save it as version, oh, yes, version uh, 11. And we'll begin uh, a, a rather simple modification to it that has big implications, consequences. And generally, this this is a reflection. I mean, I will say that uh, one of the interesting things you learn about in modeling with agent-based models, um, I actually argue it's more broadly true of computational sciences. There are some things one's interested in um, that are conceptually simple, but require more work. So we saw that example yesterday, for example, of you know the bookkeeping required um, when we were keeping track of the cumulative time smoked. That actually required some real, if not heavy lifting, you know, some some real care and finesse. It was not an obvious thing, but. You know, it, it required that and it took a while to implement. By contrast, there are some things that have huge implications, really, really important. They're really easy to implement using any logic. Um, and, you know, pick your agent-based modeling framework. It differs by modeling framework, actually. Um, so we're going to be adding the, something of that sort. It's something that's conceptually really, really important, but really easy to add. So specifically, we have this model with heart disease and smoking and their interplay. And then we have, you know, a baseline population and a, a size of 100 and a larger population of size 1,000. We're going to be adding, beyond these baselines, some intervention scenarios, okay? Um, I'm sorry? Can I zoom in? Oh, 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 okay, yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, I I didn't. I was thinking you were meaning zoom in on this camera, um, such that it you know captured up close my visage, and I. It's hard to imagine people wanting that terrifying prospect, you know, uh, in the videos. Um, uh, so, here we go. Um. Uh, so uh, we have our model and we're actually not going to do anything in this next little section with um, this component of the model. What we're going to instead, we're, we're not going to change functionality. We will do what's called refactor it. And what that's referring to is we're not going to change the behavior here, um, but we're, we're going to 
to do a bit of cleanup work that will make it um, cleaner. It will make it more easily modifiable, extensible, um, able to ask what if questions. So it relates to something that I uttered earlier. Right now, we've hard coded some quantities here, like the cessation rate, the relapse rate, the initiation rate. We've we've just hard coded them in the model. What what I mean by that is it we've just written in, you know, a value here, which is a, a quite unseemly thing to do. It's hard for me to put this together without shuddering because of that. It's it's sort of contrary to best practices, inappropriate. Um, so, um, uh, so here we're going to refactor these out as parameters where they should rightly, rightly be. All clear on the Western front? Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, to do this, we're going to take these and we're going to make them parameters, but these aren't going to be parameters that differ by person. After all, these are shared right now between all people. So it's going to be an assumption and its parameter for the model as a whole. Mm -hmm. So where's it going to live? If I, if I want to add a parameter to capture those values, where will it live? Yeah, we'll live in Maine. We, we might think, and, and you could be excused for thinking, well, it should live in person because it's about the person. It's it's used in, in person. But that would mean that each person could be lent a different value for that. And in some models, that might be useful, right? If we had income as a parameter, we could give people different incomes to capture disparities um, in income. But here, um, we actually are, are scoping the model such that we're going to share common initiation and cessation rates. So we're going to have these, even though they'll be used here, they'll be defined as parameters up in Maine. So we're gonna go down Maine. Okay, here we go, we're going to Maine. There we go. So we're gonna go to the palette and we're going to go to the agent palette and we're going to drag in a parameter for initiation rate. That one we might get back to at a later session, later today or tomorrow, and, and turn it into a really age-specific profile, um, uh, like draw it from a custom distribution for what at what age they, uh, they'll initiate. We're going to make this a default value of 0.05. Um, this is going to be a cessation rate and we're going to make this a, a value of 4.0 per year in other words um, and, and this is going to be a relapse rate and it's going to be 6.0 per year. Remember, it's a probability per year, right? Each of those is going to be used for this, this, and this, respectively. Those, those three transitions, right? Right? So you're going to tell me, just, just remind me to make sure level set here. The cessation rate is being 4.0 per year. Again, not probability. That wouldn't be, you know, above one. I mean, it's probably per year. What does that mean in terms of, give me something like concrete that that means if it's 4.0 uh, per year, um, uh, probability, wh what does that mean? That they would leave here within an average time of what? Yeah, three months, one quarter of a year. This being 6.0, right? Um, would mean they leave here on average within two months, right? One sixth of a year. Are we okay with that? So the average time is one over those values. Okay, so now let's hitch them up. Okay, so we have this 
parameter initiation rate that encodes and communicates that assumption. It communicates the assumption from a scenario to to the model um, here to the to main in the model. So initiation. What is this? Uh, we we want to refer to that parameter. What do we need to type here? Its name is initiation rate. What do we need to type? What do we type here? Okay, we might be tempted to take type initiation rate. And I don't dispute that that's among the things we have to type, but there's something more we have to do. If we if we build it now, it will not be an unhappy camper. In fact, it will be a miserable camper, as evidenced by this problems window. It says cannot be resolved to a variable. Why not? Yes. We need to tell it where to look. Where to look. And if that would be just fine, we said initiation rate, if it were in person, but it ain't in person. Where is it? It's in Maine. And up, every person knows the Maine with which they're, they're associated. So here we go. It's Maine's initiation rate, Maine dot initiation rate. It's the initiation rate in Maine. So you can think, again, you can conceptually think of the dot, it's like apostrophe S. Means initiation. Are we okay with that? Okay. You're going to tell me now what to put for cessation rate here. So we have that, but what do I type? Folks, what do I type? Main dot cessation. And autocomplete is your friend. And what do I type for relapse? Hmm? Main dot relapse, right? Right. There we go. Happy, happy. Don't put a backslash. <laughs> Take it from an old man. Okay. Are we okay with this? And because we've added these, so these refer to those parameters. And who's going to set the values for these parameters? We put some defaults there, but who's going to who's going to actually dictate that value? Say what value applies. Where is that going to be encoded in this model? Anyone? One of our online guests? One of our local guests? Speak on as in one voice. Where, where is that going to be encoded? Anyone? In the experiment. It's in the experiment, or I'd prefer to say scenario. And, um, but it is, after all, called with an X. So yeah, if we go to baseline, we'll see suddenly those are listed here, the values for those, because parameters encode an assumption and communicate what to assume from the point that creates the... So if, if they're in a certain construct, your main, it's the thing that creates main that will specify them. Initiation rate, cessation rate, relapse rate. If the parameter were in person, it would be the thing that creates person, which right now, for the examples you've seen, is in population of people we've specified. So here it's in the scenario because they're specified in main. Okay. And if we use the default value, the corresponding name will not be in boldface. But if we change the default value, the corresponding name but will be bolded. So if I ran this model, will I see any difference from what we saw before? At least statistically, you know, significant difference? No, it'll, it'll basically be the same thing. By the way, I really should have built it. Right? Build early, build up, and build happily. There we go. Does this look familiar? Familiar or not? Familiar. Okay. Um, okay. We will now do something, go a place that no bootcamp attendee has gone before. Okay. We will add a scenario that is called smoking cessation intervention. Smoking cessation program. 
So we go to the model as a whole, right click on the model as a whole, because we're adding something to the model, we're gonna add an experiment. And it's gonna be called smoking cessation intervention. You could call it program. Okay. There we go. And for this, we're going to assume Something is different. What what do you think we're going to assume is different? The cessation rate. We're going to change it from four point from four point zero to six point zero. We're going to increase it by a factor of fifty percent. Motivational interviewing efforts. Maybe maybe there's some you know. Uh, uh, some delivery of, of nicotine. Maybe this is an effect of GLP-1, I don't know. Um, but it, you know, impact on, on ability for people to quit. Um, we're gonna abstract over that here. By the way, there are some models that simulate the details of, in, of implementation of interventions where we'd have represented in the model, the folks who, who do the motivational interviewing and, and peer, peer, um, uh, peer uh, uh, efforts to raise awareness of dangers of smoking in high schools. We have them represented in the model as agents and then we have training programs for them. And you can look at, you know, uh, uh, how much resource wise is needed to, you have trained the trainers and the trainers go, go out and train uh, the peer educators and the educators have impacts and networks influencing the people around them. That's very readily doable. And it's one of the beautiful things about Asian-based model you can capture implementation, implementation of interventions. For those not familiar with it, there's a, a whole subsphere of what's called implementation science. The science of scaling up making financially sustainable, translating interventions from one area to another, uh, uh, understanding their effects over, over, over time, reasoning about their logistics. It's this whole area of, impl of, of uh, implementation science. And some people don't like it because they say, look, it's, good. it's just good design of health intervention programs. But there's some science there that's really you know, quite educational. Agent-based models in particular provide really formidable tools for doing effective intervention science or implementation science. If anyone's interested in a later session, I could show such a model. It wouldn't take long and I could, I could, you know, show, show a little bit of a, of a model that considers those things. Anyway, um, so we have a smoking cessation intervention and we're going to add another one. We're going to add another one that's going to be smoking relapse intervention. And we can say smoking relapse prevention. And here we're going to improve the relapse rate. Does that mean increasing it or decreasing it? Decreasing it. Yeah, we... We, we want to lessen relapse, right? We don't want to increase relapse. Like that would not be a, that would not be helping people, right? So we want to make relapse rate smaller and we're going to lower it by 50%. The other one we increased by 50%. This one we're going to lower by 50%. It was six. Now we're going to lower it to three. 3.0 per year. It's a good thing. When you're building a model to keep in mind units. And one of my biggest regrets is that any logic does not provide a nice platform for systematically tracking units, applying units to quantities, confirming the unit correctness, the, the, the dimensional correctness of quantities. It, it can be extremely useful to do so for many reasons. Error. Finding errors is just one of them. Informing what the logical constraints on some of the relationships or the, the formulas is another. Creating reduced scale models, models that have smaller populations 
like a hundred thousand instead of a million, but where you can scale up the results of that small model in a principled way, not necessarily linear for what it would be for the million population. To reduce the parameter space when you're doing sensitivity analysis or calibration. All of these benefit often profoundly from dimensional analysis. But alas, that is not an affordance offered by this platform. And I'm deliberate and I'm determined to rectify and make it more widely available for modelers such as yourselves. Wade raised his hand. Well, they're just system dynamics. Indeed. Indeed. Good point. Indeed. And that works actually pretty well. For system dynamics models, I stand corrected. Um, system dynamics models, any logic does support unit annotations, and it actually works very well. And it does justice to it. But agent-based modeling, um, for, for reasons that are understandable, because it's Java code, it's not tracking. But, you know, I, I can engage in mumbling but there are libraries that allow you to track units um, in Java and, and Scotland and so on that, that you could employ, but um, it's not been a priority for them. Let's, I say that with no small measure of regret. Okay, so we have a smoking cessation, smoking relapse intervention where we've improved smoking cessation. We improved the cessation rate by raising it. Uh, smoking relapse, we improved it by lowering the relapse rate. I think you know where we're going. What else were you going to do? Smoking what? Initiation. Okay. Intervention. Mm -hmm. You ready? Okay. And there for the smoking initiation intervention, we're going to lower it to 0 0.025. We're going to half it or by 50%. This is very, you know, stylized way of doing this. There are, and in fact, you may or may not be shocked to know that in a good, at least 50% of simulation models, including Asian-based models, interventions are often characterized by changing parameters. It, it's, it's at a very high level of abstraction, but again, you can actually capture the dynamics of intervention very fruitfully. We are then going to have a, an experiment that's combined uh, cessation and relapse intervention. We're gonna do both together. And you may remember, all can be greater than the sum of its parts or different than the sum of its parts. So here, we're just going to put in those assumptions that we put in for each independently. So cessation rate will be six and relapse rate will be three per year. Okay. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, if I had my druthers, I'd actually go. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time here. It's not going to be bad at all. Be real, real easy like. Um, okay, we're going to. Yeah. Um, we're going to create uh, a parameter for um, uh, death, the, the, the uh, mortality rate with heart disease, okay? So we're going to go put that as a parameter here. Mortality rate with heart disease, okay? Mortality rate, uh, let's call it heart disease mortality rate. And that's more explanatory, okay? And... We're going to keep the same value, so I'll tell you what it is. It's 0.04 per year. Okay. What does that imply about the average time till they die in that state? So what's that? 25, 25 years. years. Yeah. That's right. 
Yani. Okay. And here for this transition, what, what am I going to type? What am I going to type for that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, main dot part autocomplete is your friend. Autocomplete matters. I mean, it really can speed up and, and it it can keep your attention on the things that matter the most, make it less burdensome to have really long names that are intention revealing. And uh, and uh, generally, uh, you know, very much lower the risk of error. Okay. Okay, great. And so we're going to add one more intervention here, which is going to be one more intervention, which is going to be um, um, uh, improved. Uh, it's going to be reduced heart disease mortality, mortality intervention. Maybe I should remove the reduced because we didn't use that. We didn't say like improved cessation, but but I'm going to keep it. Sorry. Um, and we're going to make this half half its value, lower by fifty percent. Okay. Are we okay with that? Do do you kind of get that? Do you see what we're doing? We're setting up a set of alternative scenarios that each posit different things about the, the governing processes in terms of different values, you know, um, different assumptions about the particulars of those processes about the cessation rate about the relapse rate about the intervention uh, the initiation rate or about the risks of dying from cardiovascular disease secondary to heart uh, to to heavy heart disease mm -hmm. and we want to see the results of these do you get the point here the broad arc of what we're doing do you, do you appreciate it okay again do you Understand it, I should say. Not not to you like, oh yeah, I really like this. Yeah. Although I, I hope you like it too. Okay. Are we are we ready to run some of these? With your leave, may may we acquaint ourselves with, with the behavior um for the baseline? Just make note of some key statistics. And then we can ask ourselves, this is a really good practice. Before you run each of those, we'll ask, what do we expect? Sort of guess how it might change. And then we'll test our intuitions. So with your leave, might we do this? Hearing no objections, I will proceed. So ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Okay, so let's run the baseline scenario. And we'll run it at full tilt, this one here. And we'll scroll up. Do you remember these things? Do you remember these? Okay, well, let's, let's note a few things here, if we may. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, make some notes here, okay? So one thing is um, uh, peak current smokers. You know, it's it's pretty variable, right? Um, but if we look in sort of the average over this time, uh, at its peak, this is the baseline. Um, this is the baseline, Christina. So we're just running the baseline here. And the number of current smokers, you know, sort of comes up and goes down. So I'll... I'll put it roughly, it's around 30. I mean, it kind of jiggles around, but, you know, we if we ran it many, many times, we could see. 
peak current smokers around 30 and that's around time uh time 30 i don't know 30 well you know, we can say yeah it's around time i don't know 32 or something like that um okay um uh up here the peak number of people with heart disease is like 22 right um uh something like that you know um so peak number of people with heart disease is is about 22 peak um heart disease uh is 32 and it's a time sort of 33ish to like 37ish or something like that for time I'm just i'm just noting some features here of these graphs we could of course take shot screenshots of these and, and that wouldn't be a bad idea in fact i'll i think i'll i'll do this uh we get much nicer insights from this by if we had much bigger population this is kind of this is kind of spotty um i'm gonna take just to speed things up um uh, I don't want to force upon you the the close uh, acquaintance of of the uh, football brethren, and so uh, I'm gonna try to try to just make a copy of this and see if we can um, put it into to to uh, my into my um, uh, file here. Okay, here we go. I'm making some nice screenshots and. Um, we could, we could ask what's the mean, what is the mean? Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Um, uh, the mean is given there. Look at that. Can you see that? See or not? See that? The mean of this. So, so let's take that down. The mean, the mean quit histogram of, of the kind of, um, the kind of quit attempts. So mean, here we go. Mean, um, mean uh quits over the entire time of the model we've we've run it to the final time is uh mean quits is 175.4 um for mean cumulative time smoked um cumulative uh cumulative time smoked um it's 44 you know at 44.3 or so right um uh there we are. Um, uh, and and let's look at this annual heart disease incidence. Uh, we it's it's pretty, you know, we could have accumulated over on a, on a year basis. That would be very easy to do. We just tally it up over a, a multi year basis, a five year basis. But this this will just take a plot of it. The the max is three, right? Max is three um, at any one year. That's only those two years. Okay. I, I again I apologize, but but rather than going and changing the population size, I just want to do it this way. Okay. Okay. So first I want to ask, how would if we reduce cessation? Oh, sorry, increase cessation. Excuse me. Improve cessation, right? Increase it. We want people to quit more frequently, right? to be more likely to quit, right? Make more attempts in a year. How do you think that would change this? Anyone? What, how would it ripple through? It's kind of related to my, my soliloquy earlier, is it not? My impassioned oration with which we started off the day. But how is it gonna change things if I, if I improve the cessation rate, give give me some consequences. What would it affect? Okay, oh, sorry. Ah, uh, good. The number of former smokers will increase. I really should have taken a, a copy of that plot. I'm forgive me. I'm just gonna run this again and take a snapshot of that. I I I should have done that to so that we'd have a richer base. I was still focused on the peak and so on, and, and that's good. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna take this snapshot. There we go, and I'm gonna I'm gonna snooker it away if that's okay. Squirrel it away. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's let's do this. So we're gonna we're gonna try. Okay, what else would it do? What else would it affect except you know the the number of former smokers? 
because it does directly improve former smokers. What else would we expect? Mm -hmm. What else would it affect? Will it affect the cumulative time smoked? Mm -hmm. Do you expect it to increase it or decrease it? Cumulative time smoked. Decrease. Okay. How about number of times quit? Is that going to be smaller or larger? Larger. Okay. So 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 there, there's a story you could tell, either one, right? Why might it be give me one reason it could be larger? Yeah. Because the rate of going back to smoking has not changed. Okay. So you're just gonna go into those two roles free, more frequently. Okay. So yeah, I'm asking why would the number of quit attempts be? So so it may be okay, you're you're increasing the likelihood of a quit attempts. So you might think, well, more likely to do it, right? But you're right that they they'll often just fall back, right? Into that smoking role and then they'll and they'll do it again, a bit like Sisyphus, unfortunately, right? With that rock going up the hill. Yeah. Yeah. You you know Dante's Inferno and, and so on. Yeah. Um so um so so uh that's one reason. Why might it be lower? Give me a reason it might be lower. Well, like, more people spending time as a farmer smoker and 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 so they a larger fraction of the side of them are former smokers so they're they they are not going to be quitting from former smoking so so maybe it, it's lower okay so let so these are good things to ask yourself to to test your intuitions to reason through because modeling is learning and it helps to learn if you tried to think it through and you can find out where your understanding was just not, you know, on par. Okay. So, so we've run it out. What do we see? Okay. So the number of current smokers, was it increased? Was it decreased compared to what we have before? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Here, here's the, Here's the previous, oh, no, that's not it. Uh, it somehow jumped around. Hey, come on. Oh, come on. Okay. I don't I don't know why it, it zipped. Oh, my gosh. What What's going on? That's that's kind of wild. Hey. Uh, uh, okay. Somehow it, it, it changed its location. I, I, um, I guess I could share the, the other screen. But, um, oh, you know what I can do? Uh, well, it will only work for those in the room. Um, okay. Well, um, it turns out that uh, that it's lowered the number of current smokers. The peak for the current smokers before at sort of the average peak average for them was something about 30. It occurred about time 32. And now it occurs a bit earlier and it's it's more like 25 the, the the sort of average value of the current smokers you know um and the number of former smokers is actually is it increased or decreased from before it's actually bless you it's actually increased from before okay um it's actually increased from before um let's go look up here how about number of cases of heart disease anyone I'll tell you, peak heart disease in the baseline was about 32. So has it gone up or down? Sorry? Down. down. Went down from about 32 to actually just about 20, right? That's a pretty big decrease. About 50% decrease, right? A little bit more. Um, I don't think so. Let's 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 run it out. Let's see. It could be right. Um but mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. It's 22. 22. 
So yeah, it 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 didn't. Good call. Excellent call. I'll I'll take a a picture of that. So I I have that squirreled away. I was I read it as thirty two, but it's it's twenty two. Yep, twenty two twenty. What is it? Twenty two. It's twenty two. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Good. So it decreased it, but not not a ton, right? It decreased it from like twenty two to twenty, and we'd have to look. You know, was that statistically significant? Because they're kind of jiggling around. That one is less jiggly. Uh, you know, that one's less like exhibits less statistical variability. Um, okay, count of quits higher or lower? It used to be 175.4 for the baseline. This is 227.5. So it's actually significantly more. Cumulative time smoked used to be 44.3. Now it's 37. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're spending less time smoking. And here, oh, there is one, one four. Yeah, some variability. Um, but um, probably a, a, it looks a bit lower to me compared to the graph I have, but um, it's a bit hard to see. Okay, so we see some change, right? Right? Okay, let's do relapse intervention. What do you think this is going to do? If we lower the risk of relapse, what do you think it's going to do compared to the baseline? Mm -hmm. Lower relapse. Mm -hmm. Right? Lowered relapse. That's why this is bold. It's lowered. It's halved. What do you think it does? It's not. Sorry? So the number of former smokers at its peak was around sort of the average sort of smooth it out it was peak around 20. now it's like at its peak the average sort of if you smooth it it's kind of like 25 26 or something like that um there and it reached its peak before i'm, I'm kind of looking at it i have a picture of it it reached its peak around you know 25 to 30 which is kind of similar here maybe it's a bit earlier okay how about number of people with heart disease looks a bit lower actually looks a bit lower it's it's not a sustained peak of 22 or what have you or, or okay kind of quits what do you expect to be higher or lower well it was 175 now it's 145.9 Kim of time smoked was 44.3 and now it's 36 right and here's our heart disease incidence. Well, we'd have to do a statistical test on that. It's really, really variable. Okay. How about smoking initiation? What if I lower that by 50%? How do you th expect that to affect things? Will it affect how much time people spend smoking? You move on. Um, but maybe most people who would initiate are going to initiate eventually anyway. But they're going to spend less time as a current smoker. It's going to affect the heart disease. Y yeah, as a result of their smoking status. But they may only hold off at this rate. They may only hold off. For about, well, they'll hold off for about 40 years before starting smoking right now. Let's, let's go run it out. Take a load of that. You see that? I'm hearing no one say no. Um, so, so what's happened? Can anyone say? Well, the peak, so the smooth peak for current smokers. Mm -hmm. By the way, we get a much better read if we ran again and again and again. But the peak for current smokers used to be about 30. What's the peak here? The peak for current smokers? Oh. Yeah. The peak is about 20. 
roughly. And it occurs later. The peak before was occurring at around on 30. Now it's kind of between 40 and 50. Why would it occur later for the peak of current smokers? We're lowering the cessation rate. Why would that mean the peak number of smokers is a bit later? The sorry, the initiation. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, the initiation rate. Why would it mean the peak of number of smokers occurs later? Does that make sense? You bet it makes sense because people take longer to become smokers, right? Okay, okay, okay. Number of former smokers. Is this different from before? Yeah, before the sort of peak value, average peak value is around twenty. If you smooth it, it's about twenty. Now it's down around 10. You, you see that or not? See that or not? Okay. Okay. How about people with heart disease? The peak for that, as Larissa observed acutely, perceptively, carefully, was, was around 20. And now it's somewhere down around, it, it went to a peak of around 22. But now it's around 17 peak. Lowered or not? Lower. Was that a bigger lowering? Was was that reduction larger than it was when if we invested in that change in cessation? Yeah, it was a, it lowered it by more. <laughs> um it reduced it by a larger amount. Um and, and same thing with relapse. Count of quits here. Um in the original. The count of the quits was, mean quits was 175. Now it's down to 141. Now, this should make you think, did we change a parameter? Did we change anything about, directly about heart disease? No. But we changed something that affected heart disease. We changed initiation, but it brought down the number of former smokers. Even though initiation doesn't go into former smoker, why does it bring down the number of former smokers to... Like, why would it reduce the number of former smokers if you initiate, there's less chance per year of initiating smoking? Why? Because fewer people started smoking in the first place. Yeah, fewer people started smoking. It, it keeps the number of people who are smoking lower. And so, it, it, although they don't start as former smokers, they eventually become former smokers. Do you see why I say, like, in, a, in one of these models, things are coupled together. And you may think, well, I'm interviewing just here. It only affects things there. But no, you, you, generally it has pervasive ramifications. It ramifies over different areas of the model. Maybe not all of the model. There may be things strictly upstream that aren't affected. But a lot of the times it has these sort of pernicious, these broad ramifications, promiscuous ramifications that affect a bunch of things. So we didn't change anything about quitting or relapsing, but it sure affected the number of people who are former smokers, even though it doesn't come in to former smoker. No, it's coupled, it, it's linked. It's logically related to that. Do you see, do you see my point? Okay, um, count of quits was, went down from 175.4 and the baseline to 141. Um, Cumulative of time smoked went down from 44.3 to 35. And heart disease incidents, well, we'd have to look, but again, we need a statistical test. Okay, happy, happy. Okay, now if I do both together, uh, sorry. Well, no, uh, yeah, okay. So let's do both together. How would you expect that to change things? Improved cessation and reduced relapse. How would you expect it? What do you think that will give? Hmm? How will it, will it raise the number of former smokers? Yeah, well, people are more likely to quit and lower, the, lower to relapse, right? But, Yeah, okay, so well, well, yes, um, that's true. They're less likely to die, too, right? Because they're not smokers. 
So it will be especially higher, right? It'll, it should lower the number that are heart smokers for sure, right? How about heart disease? Will it affect that? Will it affect heart disease? You bet it will. Even though we're not changing anything about developing heart disease per se, like we're not changing that particular particular value associated with dying from heart disease, or but we are affecting things which ripple through to that, right? Okay, here you go. Lots more former smokers. Lots and lots more former former smokers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, lots and lots. Um, and we see a lot fewer current smokers. Went down from a sort of smooth mean of about 30 to about 15. Number of people with heart disease down from about 22 at its peak to about at its peak, about 16 or something like that. Quite a bit. Kind of quits down from 175.4 to 142.9. Cumulative time smoked down, down from 44.3 to 24.1. Mm. And heart disease incidence, well, again, we'd have to do statistical tests. Okay, so it and it helped a little bit extra, not not a not a dramatic, utterly dramatic thing. How if we reduce heart disease mortality? So we have so if you develop if you've developed heart disease, you have lower mortality from heart disease. How would you expect that to ripple through? We really should have a graph of heart disease mortality. Oh uh, no, uh, mumble. Yeah, we don't have a graph of. But okay, so if I lower heart disease mortality, mortality with heart disease, is it gonna affect the number of current smokers? Why? Someone might say, well, it's downstream of that. It's, it, you know, uh, it, it's, smoking affects heart disease. Heart disease doesn't affect smoking, but there's a problem with that argument. Why? Yes, Christina, they live longer. They live longer. So you might, there might be more current smokers. It's not a bad thing. We kept them alive instead of passing away, right? Mm -hmm. Will it affect the number of former smokers? Yeah. Do you think it will increase it or decrease it? Probably increase it, although it's, yeah, probably. Okay, so so here we go. Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's. It's good to think these things through, but let's let, let's look right. Current smokers in the original sort of had a sort of smooth mean about thirty. Now current smokers, interestingly, current smokers is a bit lower. It's kind of kind of interesting. Um, did I run that right? <laughs> um, is that, is that is that right? Yeah, heart disease mortality rate. Right? Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Interesting. Someone help me. Help me. Parse that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I went down from. Okay. Yeah, I went down. That's 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 a good puzzle. I would have thought that you. would keeping them alive longer. But what you do see, actually, this is notable. It's really later, like when they've developed heart disease, this is actually significantly more, or it, it looks to me significantly more once you're about time 65 or, or 60, you know, late 60s. Now with here, it's about 20 and the original model, it was more like 15. So later it tends to affect them. And that's probably because it's by that time they've done what? It's higher later because they have developed heart disease by then. Early on, they haven't really developed heart disease. So, okay. Um, number of people with heart disease, has it gone up or down? Anyone? It's gone up. Its peak used to be about 22. Now, 
the peak here is like 27. Is that good or bad? They're not dead. So it's good. All right? Count of quit attempts. Originally, has it gone up or down? It's gone up from 175.4 to 182.3. So they can quit more times, <laughs> right? <laughs> Cumulative time smoked. Do you think it will increase it or decrease it? Increase it from 44.3 to 45.2 here. Is that really, really bad? Is it, is it, is it bad or, you know, or worsening their health? No, we've kept them alive, right? Yeah, so there's there are smoke longer, but because they don't die, right? And heart disease incidents, well, it, anyway, I'm not going to comment. We really should have a graph on heart disease mortality. Um, we're about to break for lunch. Can we add that right now, a heart disease mortality graph? Can we add it? Yeah, we might as well just have it as an asset. We're going to close off that model. After we come back from lunch, we're, we're going to be going in a different direction, although we may eventually come back to this model. But let's just complete the thought. So you tell me. You're going to steer. I want to keep track of heart disease mortality. Mortality from heart disease. Mm -mm. How would I do it? What do I need to do? What are the, what are the building blocks? And how do I have to hitch them up to each other? I welcome our online colleagues if they would like to speak. Anyone? Anyone? What do we need to do? We want to record the number of people who died from heart disease. What's one thing we need? Okay, let's. Oh, someone is more beginner with these models earlier in their learning journey. What's one thing we we need? Hmm. What's something we, we need to add? Okay, yeah. So it has to do with death from heart disease. Excellent. So we need to do something with this. But what do we what do we need to do when this transition happens? What do we need to do? Oh, okay, but we're, we want to record the number of people who go across this transition cumulatively. So what are we gonna do? Just like we recorded the number of people who number of times they quit. So what do we need? We wanna have a running tally of how many people have died thus far over the entire model from heart disease. What do we need? A variable because it's going to what? It's going to change. It's we one might say and be excused for saying it that it a job of a variable is to do what over time to vary, and that's a very good comment. Um, okay, so I'm going to say count. Deaths with heart disease. Are we okay with that? Okay, now, I'm, you notice I'm hedging my bets because people with heart disease can die of other conditions. And really, I should have two transitions, probably one from natural causes and one for heart disease attributed death from there. And they'd be competing with each other. Uh, but I even... I haven't done it yet. It's just okay. What's its initial value going to be? For, oh, first, what type is it going to be? It's going to be an int because it's going to be a count. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a count. And it's going to start at zero, and its job is to vary. And what is going to make it vary? Under what conditions will it increment? Will it rise? Sorry? 
Well, we could do it exit this date, but we want to get it again. I might add another transition here eventually, which is this says deaths with heart disease, and that's true. But in the future, we could have deaths from heart disease and deaths from natural causes in this heart disease state and 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 understand this attributable, you know, the amount attributed to it. Okay, so what do I have to do? I'm going to do it associated with this. What do I do and where do I do it? Yes. Sorry? Quite right. The count should be in Maine. I'm sorry. What am I? I was thinking count quits, but that's crazy. It's not count. What am I doing? What am I doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, that should be in Maine. Why should it be in Maine? I feel like person can only count themselves once. I think seeing that person can only count them. I was looking at that other variable. I thought, oh, it'll be just like that count of this. But no, no, no. It has to live in Maine because it's counting up across the population. Very important point. Um, I am so grateful for, for having this pointed out. And when you die, we are completely engaged. So the information is. Correct. Yes, that information would be lost. So it would be pointless, right? Or or recording that, except if we squirreled it away immediately. Okay, so what do we need to do there? So it lives in Maine, All right? It lives in Maine. Starting value is zero. And what do we need to do? That was like a giant lapse, man. Okay, what do we need to do here? What do we need to do? Speak on. We have to increment it. So what do I have to type? You tell me. What do I have to type? Main dot, because it lives in main. It's mains, right? Main dot count deaths with heart disease. And what do I have to do to it? Yeah, plus equals one. Okay. You get to choose. Happy, happy. Clear enough? Less obscure, maybe? Maybe plus equals is maybe not everyday notation, but maybe less obscure. We could do plus plus. We could do plus equals one. We could say count equals that plus one. It would be a bit wordy. Um, but we could do it that way. Mm -hmm. Are we okay with that? Okay. And now, so we do this. And now we're going back to main. And suppose we want to have a plot that depends on that variable. What do we need to do? Speak on intrepid use. What do we need to add? We need to add a plot. What sort of plot? What sort of plot do we add? A time plot. Okay, time plot. And this will be called cumulative heart disease mortality time plot. This is, is it a value or a data set? It's a value. You can, you can have a data set. We actually had a data set uh, which records things over time, but this is a value and it's going to be called cumulative heart, cumul I'll, I'll call it cumulative deaths from with heart disease. We have to be careful because it's actually not separated out to be from heart disease. We could have two transitions. One could be from heart disease. The other could be you know, other causes, right? Okay. Um, and what's its value going to be? You tell me. What's its value? What value is it plotting out? Count. Could we have done this all with a statistic in the population? No, we could 
because a lot of the people on whom we're collecting data are by definition no longer in the model, right? They don't, they're gone from the model. So we can't count, a statistic counts up over the population, a cross-sectional statistic. This is, is not of that sort. They're gone from the population, but we need to record that they died from it. Are we okay with this? Can we, can we run it now May, with your leave? Okay. We're, we're we're coming in for a soft landing time wise. We're we're in good shape. We're gonna end in the next for the next five minutes. I wanna riddle you this. You've seen the results of these scenarios. So this is what I want to ask you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want to ask you. Which of these scenarios is gonna have the lowest? Count, cumulative count of heart of heart disease related mortality of deaths with heart disease. Which of these is going to have the smallest? Do you think it'll be the baseline? No. <laughs> One thing I can be sure of it it, it ain't the baseline. You want to let's see what it is for the baseline. May we run it? Make sure it builds. Make sure it's a happy camper, and happy it is. What did it say? Look at that. Wait, check that out. It it actually never says like I'm happy. <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't say build can it, it just says the name of the model. In fact, it says the wrong model name. <laughs> um okay, I'm gonna select the models. Uh, do you ever have you quit it since Monday or is it any logic? Yeah. No, I haven't quit it. Should I quit it? I, I tend to close all models if, if every time I've done it works better. Okay, that that's a, a, a good lesson. Um it seems to avoid some of these shortages of problems. Yeah. In some areas of life it's a good thing to never quit, but um this is not one of them. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here we go. We we we've been through it before. This is the baseline, old hat. Um here's cumulative heart disease mortality. What's its peak? We're going to just use that. Its peak is about 100, right? Like, it's, it's, in fact, we could copy, right? We can press this to copy. We could go to our trusty Excel. There we go. And if we scroll down, oh, uh, uh, 49. Okay, I don't know why I said it's 100. Thought, oh, Oh, time 100, yeah, yeah, 49, 49, yeah, thank you. Okay, so 49 people died from heart disease in this model, right? For the baseline. What do you think it is for, well, look, we can combine both, right? We, we know that's likely to be fewer people dying from heart disease than either just cessation or just relapse. How much do you think this reduces it? Anyone? It's a hard thing to reason through in your head. Our wetware is just not very good at reasoning through complex systems and mod and complex systems. So let's let's use a computer for what it's good for. Lots of doing lots of dumb things again and again. So now it's been reduced to about 45 over that time. Mm -hmm. Bit lower. Bit lower. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at reduced heart disease mortality intervention. What do you think that's lower or high? Okay, lower. Okay, let's let's let's, let's give it a try. You know, you know, you know. Let's let's go. Okay, yeah, thirty. So like thirty six, thirty thirty six. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so this 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 actually does lower it by more. It does help to, to help their smoking behaviors, which is a major risk factor in developing heart disease, but it doesn't help as much in this case in terms of mortality consequences of smoking as as a 50% reduction in 
in uh, the particular mortality for people, which is very aggressive, extremely aggressive, right? um, mind you, um, and often much harder to, to get. Anyway, we've looked at some what-if scenarios. We added a new measure, and I think we'll now take a well-deserved lunch and be back in an hour. Are we good with that? Thank you very much for your attention. And after lunch, we will go in a very different direction with networks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. I'm going to disconnect from the, uh, once again, from the, from uh, remote participants. We're going to close Zoom so it starts recording the videos. And I will press myself to the task as soon as those are produced of um, posting them to YouTube. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. See you in an hour.